In this video, we're going to be looking at the principal agent problem. Now, this problem is when there is a conflict of interest between two stakeholders. So it's usually the owners and the managers. The owners are the principals uh, and the managers and the day-to-day -day employees are the agents. So now we're going to look at this conflict of interest between the owners and the managers. Now, owners, obviously, they want to maximize their profits. Uh, they want to have a goal of profit maximizing because that way they get more dividends. Because if you look at the basis behind this problem, it's because when the firm gets really large, um, the day-to-day -day control and the ownership is separated. So the same person who owns it is not controlling it. And this uh, difference is what is spurring the um, sort of conflict. And so owners, they if they were in charge running it, they would profit maximize in order to get larger sums of dividends. But managers would seek to do other goals. So this results in a lack of focus in terms of profit maximizing. And thus, they end up profit um, sat satisficing. Now, this is where they make just enough profit to keep sort of the owners happy, but they don't maximize. And they do this because they lose focus. So that means that X inefficiencies begin to rise. And this is what it results in. So what are these other goals that these managers may wish to pursue? They may wish to sales maximize. They may wish to have the largest firm and have, be a manager of the largest firm in the market. So they might sales maximize. Or they, their goal might be to increase perks, company cars, well-being of employees, happiness, that kind of prestigiousness and all these things of a company. So they might not want to profit maximize. Or they might want to maximize the number of staff, encourage people to work here and these kind of things. So they might revenue maximize. So how can we avoid this conflict from happening? Well, there's two ways. We can incentivize managers because we want them to think the same way as us and take responsibility for their actions. So by doing share bonus schemes where managers are rewarded for a certain level of profit um, they reach, they will be they will be incentivized by this. However, conditions need to be set in these kind of schemes because they might just decide to reduce the well-being of their employees, cut staffing costs, and increase the profits that way. Or you could have non-executive directors representing the wishes of owners, and they are not going to be involved in day-to-day -day running, or they're not going to benefit from any perks, status, or anything. So they are purely there just to sort of represent to say you know our view is how can we profit maximize and keep the managers on their toes thank you for watching i hope this helps